Hi, it's Maya here with my December wrap up and then I can finally leave the 2017 reading year behind me. So in December I read five books and eight comics and I will talk about the books first, going from my lowest rating to my highest rating. I didn't read a bad book in December but I read a few three star books and they just didn't work for me personally that well. So the first book that I'm going to talk about is It Devours by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. This is another Night Vale novel so it is set in the world of the Welcome to Night Vale podcast, which I really enjoy. And I read this one from the library. In this one, a new Night Vale resident, scientist Nilanjana Sikdar, starts to suspect that the local religious cult, the joyous congregation of the Smiling God, is up to no good. And there are these mysterious earth shakes in the area. I really like the podcast and I like the first book which is set in this world, but I wasn't a big fan of It Devours. I think it is because I like that the weirdness of Night Vale is really everyday to the residents of Night Vale. And since Neil and Jana was a new resident, she often remarked on the weirdness. I just want the strangeness to be just business as usual. I don't want the characters who live there remarking on how weird it is. Also, the ending reveal was evident from the start, at least it was to me, and the characters that just didn't figure it out until the very end. And I get that it fit the theme of what the book was trying to say, but it just made the characters seem stupid. But the book did have the fun and wit of Night Vale, and I did laugh out loud a couple of times. I gave this one three stars. Then I read a comic fantasy novella from my Kindle, and that is Nine Goblins by T. Kingfisher, aka Ursula Vernon, and this is one of her early, earlier novellas. This tells about a group of uh, army goblins who get transported on the wrong side of the border, so on the elves and humans side. The goblins and the elves and humans are at war. So the goblins are at this battlefield and they rush this wizard who panics and teleports away and takes the goblins with him to the wrong side of the border. And the goblins will have to travel back to the lands of the goblins. In the way they meet this elf veterinarian and there's also this very dark event that this plot rev revolves around, very dark for a comic novella. It is happening in a nearby village to where the elf lives. So this was fun. Some of the goblins reminded me a bit of some of the characters in the City Watch of the Discworld series. Also the elf character was very much a Vernon-like character. He liked to garden and he treated animals with very messy conditions, so it wasn't uh, like petting a unicorn. It was the messy sort of veterinarian work. On the other hand, it was fun and light and a nice story, but then it was also quite dark. The mystery and the plot that was going on, where people from this one village had uh, disappeared. And I don't know if I would have liked it more in a darker toned story. I don't know if the pieces fit that well together. I did really like how it was resolved and everything, but it felt a bit weird of a combination. I liked all the parts, but in the end I only gave this one three stars. Next I read another book from the library and that was The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee and this is a young adult historical adventure book. It tells of Monty who is this young English lord who goes on his grand tour of Europe before he has to take over handling the family estate and he goes on this tour with his best friend Percy with whom he is secretly fallen in love with and Percy is half black. And then there's also his sister Felicity who is accompanying them until she gets to this European school of manners that she's on her way to. Now I had heard about this book that there's a magical element, that there's this magical object that Monty finds. And from that I had thought that this was a fantasy of manners book, a fancy book set in Regency Europe with added magic. And that sort of threw me off because this isn't it. This is historical adventure. So it's historical adventure with a magical MacGuffin, sort of like Indiana Jones movies, where there are some magical elements, but they are clearly historical adventure movies. That threw me off a bit because I was expecting a fancy book for some reason. I was a bit surprised at how hard the topics were that this book tackles, perhaps a bit pleasantly surprised. It tackles topics like racism, invisible illness, abusive parents and the place of women in the world. And I can see how this would be a great book for many people, but for some reason I didn't fully connect with it and I didn't completely get into it. I was sort of reading it at 
a bit of an arm's length, even though the topics were interesting and everything. I don't know if it, that was just because I had expected a fantasy book, I have no idea, but I gave this one three, 3.5 stars. I also read my NetGalley review copy of Prime Meridian by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, and this is a science fiction novella about this woman who lives in poverty in future Mexico City, and she really wants to go and live on Mars. Mars has been colonized at this point. And I will do a separate review of this, so look forward to that, but I can tell that I liked it and gave it 3.5 stars. And the final book that I'm going to talk about and the one that I enjoyed the most in December was The Prey of Gods by Nikki Drayden. This is a debut novel which is set in South Africa and it follows a large cast of characters. Some of them are demigoddesses, some of them are humans who start gaining magical powers and some of them are AI characters, uh, robots who start gaining sentience. And there's this demigoddess who is on her way to vengeance and power and is a threat to humanity. This was very easy to get into. It has very short chapters from different characters' point of view, and the cast is quite large, so it's easy to keep on reading just one more chapter. What happens to this character? Oh, what happens to this character? And the chapters are short, so it's easy to keep going. But in fact, because of this fast pace and this large cast, the ending felt a bit rushed. There are also tons of ideas in this novel, and I think maybe some of them could have been focused on a bit more. It was just bringing me with ideas. I'm really looking forward to what Nikki Drayden writes next, in case I didn't say this is her debut novel. So you're sure to find a favorite among this cast of characters, because there are so many, they are very different. And my favorite was this personal assistant bot, or an Alfie, as they are called in this world, who starts to become self-aware. I body read this with Enteri from Onyx Pages, and we filmed this whole discussion video about it, and I will leave a link to it down below. It's on her channel, so you can go check it out if you want. I gave this one four stars. So those were all the books, and I'm going to talk about the comics that I read in December, again from the lowest rating to the highest rating. So my least favorite comic of the month was the second volume of Zombilenium by Arthur de Ban. Resources humaines, or human resources in the English translation, I read the French version. So this is the second volume of this French comic about an amusement park which is being run by the undead and other creatures of the night. In this one there's this theme park visitor with an interesting past who arrives there with his family, and also there are some humans who are against monsters and are planning a terror attack. So in one of those storylines, what could have been an interesting antagonist with a great backstory is immediately dissolved into fat shaming and fat jokes, and it wasn't pretty. Also, the plot was a bit all over the place, and I gave this volume two stars, and I will not be continuing on with the series. Then I continued on with Harrow County, the southern gothic horror series that I've been reading from the library, and this one is called Hedge Magic, and it's by Cullen Bunn and Tyler, Tyler Crook. It continues the story of Emmy, who is the reincarnation of a powerful witch, and in this one she finds herself at odds with her best friend. I actually started and finished the year with a Harrow County volume, it wasn't planned, I just noticed it on Goodreads, but in this one the, there's this divide between Emmy, the main character, and her best friend Bernice, and it felt a bit rushed, the whole feud, and also how it was resolved. It all just felt like it was going a bit too quickly. So I am still interested in seeing what happens next. I gave this one three stars. Next I finished Natalie Reese's miniseries Space Battle Lunchtime with Volume 2, A Recipe for Disaster. So this tells about the chef Peony, who in the first volume was transported into this intergalactic cooking show competition on TV. So this conclusion, the second volume ups the stakes with Peony's life in peril. This is an all ages space adventure with a romance between two female characters, which was nice, but it was fun and a very quick read. I gave it three stars. In December, I also read the first two volumes of Full Metal Alchemist by Hiromu Arakawa, and I have seen a bit of one of the animes before, but I haven't read the manga before. This is a fantasy manga about two brothers. Edward Elric is the full metal alchemist, and he has one arm and one leg that are made of metal, and his younger brother is Alphonse Elric, and his spirit lives in this large suit of armor. The two brothers travel the world looking for the Philosopher's Stone, in hopes that it would help them to restore their bodies, and they get to all sorts of adventures on the way. The two brothers, Edward and Alphonse, are such great characters and I really enjoy their dynamic and they're so funny. There were these different adventures in the first volume and one of them is like really dark. I remembered it, I saw those episodes of the anime years ago and I still remember that storyline. It was so dark and haunting, even though this is 
funny at times. It can also have some serious topics in it. I really like the first volume. In the second one, a lot more characters were introduced, and if I hadn't seen the anime, it might have been even too many characters, since they were so briefly introduced, some of them were. So I might have been confused. The bigger plot in the series promises to be building up to something very interesting. I gave the first volume 4 stars and the second volume 3.5 stars. Then I read volumes 2 and 3 of Jonesy by Sam Humphreys and Caitlin Rose Boyle. This is a young adult series. It tells about Jonesy in the middle there, who has this power to make people fall in love with things and other people and ideas, just not herself. And in these two volumes, she has to take a long, hard look at how she has been using her powers. I bought this second volume on Christmas break when there was a comicsology sale and after I finished it I immediately went back and bought the third volume. I read these two in two days. Jonesy as a character just captivates me and the whole comic just makes me smile. One thing that happened was that I didn't know this series was ending or going on hiatus so when I was reading the third volume. The second one sort of ended on a bit of a cliffhanger. I wanted to know what happened next and I started reading the third one and I had no idea that it would be the end, at least for now. So my reading sort of suffered from that, from not knowing it was the finale. I would have approached it a bit differently if I had known. Now it was sort of sprung on me. I was reading the end and I was like, hey wait, she's talking like this is the end? So I was a bit surprised, and for that reason I gave the second volume 4 stars and the final volume 3 stars. And the final comic and my favorite comic from December was the third volume of The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabe. This is a manga series, it's a dark and tranquil fantasy series, and in this one teacher and little girl Shiva get separated. We also come face to face with the paranoia of the inside, which is the inside of the wall where all the humans live in this world. And this series just continues to be so good. I really enjoyed the first volume and the third one. I liked the second one, but not on the same level as these two. The atmosphere is great, it's slow and silent, but powerful. And the art is gorgeous. And also, the most importantly, the relationship between these two main characters is just so heartwarming. I really do recommend this series. They are so short. Even though they're like regular manga sized, it always leaves me wanting more and I just feel like I didn't get enough and I want more right now. And that might be a good thing. I'd give this one 4 or 4.5 stars. So that was my December wrap up. Next I can talk about the books I read in 2018, my January books. Let me know if you have read any of these and what you thought about them. And I will talk to you later in my next video. Bye.